teach we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Good morning to one and all. My name is Sheldon Francis and welcome to this morning's Youth Devotional. At this time, bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to be alive for yet another day. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness towards us. And we pray that your blessings would follow us throughout the rest of the day, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's devotional is entitled, A Different Point of View. The scripture reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. According to the wikipedia.org, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. In terms of absolute numbers, Irreligion appears to be increasing along with secularism in general. On, and to top it off, the American Religious Identification Survey gives Wicca, which is spiritualism, an average annual growth of 143% for the, from the period of 1990 to 2001. So what does the Christian young person do? 
How do we share the gospel with these and other groups? Let's look at two encounters in the Bible with people of other faiths. Be intentional. God calls Abraham. In both the Old and the New Testament, we see God's, God being intentional in calling people and making disciples through whom he would reach the world and other people. When God called Abraham, then called Abram, in Genesis 12, 1, he told him to leave the countryside, his family and his parents' house. Everything familiar had to be left behind, and that including his, re his religion. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing, is it too small a thing, that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel? I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Isaiah 49 and verse 6. What a transformation from idol worshiper Abraham to friend of God, Abraham. Joshua 24 and verse 22. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in times of old. Even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. Isaiah 41 and verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. This friendship between God and Abraham was not based on anything Abraham did. Instead, it was based on God's everlasting covenant with Abraham and Abraham's faith in accepting it. I said your friendship with God is not based on what you can do. It is not based on how much money you have. It is not based on how bright you are. God's friendship between you and me is based solely on his love towards us and our acceptance of his love. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus and the Samaritan woman. In the encounter with the woman at the well, we see Jesus being intentional in taking the journey to get to the woman and to share the good news with her. When the disciples went away to buy food, Jesus used the opportunity to speak to the woman. She was seeking the next best thing. She desired a fulfilled life that cannot be found in another person or thing. Jesus took the time to gently speak to her and engage her. We too must be intentional in reaching others. He did not embarrass her. Instead, Jesus gently pointed out her sin, which in turn caused her eyes to be open to the truth and to who he is. May I speak to some elder today, some leader, some pastor, God's people, his youth, are his children. You do not speak to them however you please. You do not treat them however you please. Speak with love in the fear of God and Jesus will be revealed. John chapter 4, 17 to 26. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say 
that in, in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Note, there are members who may have the wrong ideals of what is acceptable before God, but speak to them in love. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship me no, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seek such to worship him. The God, uh, God, 20, verse 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him. I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Friends, Jesus has come and he is here. Her sins did not shock Jesus. Our sins do not shock Jesus. It is only through Jesus that we can be saved from our sins. God was always concerned about extending his love and forgiveness to all nations and the people of all the earth. And as Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 states, God knows the plans he has for you and everyone else also. And they are plans to prosper us not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. That means all of us, everyone. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are God again. And we say thanks for the gift of salvation. Lord, I lift up your youth before you, asking that you would make your way plain before them. I pray that they would seek the light of heaven, that they would, they would choose the straight path, not the road to destruction with all the ease of life. I pray that they would come to understand that you are the God who gives them the everlasting life that they so much would like to have, a life of bliss in the near future. Lord, I pray that the God, they would understand their father that salvation is a free gift and they can obtain it by just accepting your word and believing in you and allowing themselves to be transformed so that they can lead others to christ i ask for your blessings on each and every one today i pray in Jesus' name
to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Worship Him in all the nations, in all the 